Welcome to Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. Oh, you're in for a real treat. The Carousel of Progress was Walt's own idea from beginning to end. He loved it. He introduced the show at the World's Fair in New York City in 1964, and it was an immediate smash hit. Millions of people came to see it. And since then, the Carousel of Progress has had more performances than any other stage show in the history of American theater. You know, Walt loved the idea of progress, and he loved the American family. And he himself was probably as American as anyone could possibly be. He thought it would be fun to watch the American family go through the 20th century, experiencing all the new wonders as they came. And he put them together in a show called Carousel of Progress, which we are now about to see. Although our Carousel family has experienced a few changes over the years, our show still revolves around the same theme, and that's progress. May the century begin. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow Shining at the end of every day There's a great big beautiful tomorrow And tomorrow is just a dream away Man has a dream and that's the star He follows his dream with mind and heart and when it becomes a reality, it's a dream come true for you and me. So there's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow, shining at the end of every day. There's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow, just a dream away. It looks like the Robins are getting ready to celebrate Valentine's Day today. <laughs> what year is it? Oh, right around the turn of the century. And believe me, things couldn't be any better than they are today. Yes, sir, buildings are towering now as high as 20 stories. The moving pictures flicker up on a big screen. We have almost 8,000 automobiles in this country, and we can travel by train from New York to California in less than seven days. And I even hear tell about two brothers in North Carolina who are working on some kind of flying contraption. <laughs> It'll never work. Closer to home, we've now got gas lamps, a telephone, and the latest design in cast iron stoves. And that reservoir keeps five gallons of water hot in just three buckets of coal. Oh, boy, it sure beats chopping wood. And isn't our new ice box a beauty? Look at that. Holds 50 pounds of ice. Milk doesn't sour as quick as it used to. And our dog Rover here keeps the water in the drip pan from overflowing. It wasn't too long ago we had to carry water from a well. And thanks to progress, we've got a pump right here in the kitchen. Of course, we keep a bucket of water handy to prime it with. Yes, sir, we've got everything we need to make life easier. Say, Mother, mm -hmm. I was reading about a fellow named Tom Edison who's working on an idea for snap-on electric lights. Electric lights? No more kerosene, no more gas. <laughs> Sarah sure gets to the core of the apple. But we do have this new wash day marvel. Now it takes me only five hours to do the wash. Imagine, it used to take two days. Oh, well, that's right, folks. Now Sarah has time for other things like... Like canning uh, and cleaning the oven. Yes, dear. Well, ovens don't just clean themselves, you know, dear. I know, dear. <laughs> and they probably never will. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get the laundry off the line before it starts raining cats and dogs. <coughs> oh, don't worry, Rover. She didn't mean real dogs. Besides, it's not going to rain today. My lumbago isn't acting up. Say, I told you so. Boy, look at it come down. All you have to do is put your wash on the line, right? Oh, well, the cistern was low anyway. Wow, we look at that. Now, James, I thought I told you to ask my permission before using my new stereoscope. That's not a toy, you know. Ooh, la, la. So that's little Egypt doing the hoochie-coochie, eh, Dad? Isn't she a knockout? She's the star of the new World's Fair in St. Louis, and... <clears throat> now, you put that away before your mother finds it. Aw, oh, Dad. You heard me. Well, we have one of those new talking machines. Now that is something. It plays music right here in our home. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. Ah! She keeps that thing going all day long. Ah! Progress. Ah! Oh, Papa. Yes, Patricia? Papa, all these people. I'm, 
I'm indecent. <laughs> Don't worry, Patricia. They're friends. That's our teenage daughter. She's getting ready to go to a Valentine's dance across town on one of those new horseless trolleys. I think it's very romantic you're taking Mother out for Valentine's dinner this evening. Well, you know what kind of sport I am. I only hope I have an evening as romantic. Now, you be home by 9 o'clock, daughter. You hear me? Yes, Papa. Oh, well, with all this talking, I've worked up quite a thirst. <laughs> I think I'll take one of those newfangled trolleys down to the drugstore soda fountain and meet the boys for a cold sarsaparilla. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. We're drinking root beer now. Same kind of thing, different name. Well, that's progress for you. And uh, speaking of progress, there's a great big beautiful tomorrow shining at the end of every day. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow, and tomorrow is just a dream away. Man has a dream, and that's the start. He follows his dream with mind and heart. And when it becomes a reality, it's a dream come true for you and me. So there's a great big beautiful tomorrow, shining at the end of every day. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow, just a dream away. Phew, boy, hottest 4th of July we've had in years. We've come a long way, though, since the turn of the century, over 20-some-odd years ago. You know that pilot fella, Charles Lindbergh? He's about to fly a single-wing airplane all the way across the Atlantic. <laughs> He's never going to make it. And sports stadiums are springing up all over. And boy, nobody hits that old horse hide like that new fella, Babe Ruth. Jazz music is the cat's meow. And there's been ads in the paper for months for a movie starring Al Jolson. He's going to talk and sing. Boy, I've got to see that. <laughs> there goes Schwartz in his Huffmobile. He sure loves that horn. You know, in my new Essex, I've got an electric starter. Now I don't have to crank. We can travel from New York to Los Angeles by train in only three days. And we've got a house full of new electrical servants. Mr. Edison sure added life to our home. <laughs> Rat. That's the third one this week. I buy fuses by the case. Uh -oh. And I own the whole neighborhood again. Henry! He did it again! Go over and give that neighbor of ours what for! Easy, Rover. Jimmy, hurry up with that fuse. Shucks! Every time he has company, he blows a fuse. And guess who always has to change it? I heard that, young man. I heard that. Oh, well, that's more like it. John, yours is the last costume I've got to finish before the parade starts. Sarah's Ladies Club is responsible for our town's 4th of July celebration tonight. She's got us all roped into performing in their program. And I've I... decided we're going as George and Martha Washington, dear. Oh, the father of our country. <laughs> that's a role that really fits me. You know, I'm I... so glad we installed an electric light fixture here on the porch because it's just too darn hot to be sewing inside. Yes, Sarah. You know, next year I'd like to go as Benedict Arnold. <laughs> Wait until you see what I've got planned for the fireworks show tonight. Rover, don't interrupt while Sarah's interrupting. And guess who volunteered to choose the music for the program? I did, Pop. Listen to this. Oh, that's a nice tune, Jimmy. You know, with our new Crosley radio set, we can get news and big-time entertainment from all over the country, even Pittsburgh. People are starting to arrive downtown for a spectacular 4th of July parade and fireworks event tonight. Mayor Beerfield is about to... Oh, Patricia. Yes, Father? Better get a move on. The radio says folks are arriving downtown. Do I really have to go? If my new boyfriend, Theodore, sees me in this, it'll scare him away. Well, dear, if that happens, you'll always have that torch you can carry for him. <laughs> oh, father. Calm down, Rover. I was only kidding. By the way, we have indoor plumbing now. Oh, boy, that's really great on cold nights, especially for our perennial house guest, old Uncle Orville. 
<laughs> Uncle Orville's taken over the coolest spot in the house, of course, and he's rigged up a real clever contraption. He calls it air cooling. <laughs> Too bad he's not reading the help wanted ads. No privacy at all around this place. Sorry, Orville. You know, considering all oh, the... Oh, George, your costume's ready. Oh, coming, Martha, as I was saying. Considering all the conveniences we now have, I'll say that we're really on easy street these days. It just can't get any better. Just goes to show that there's a great big beautiful tomorrow Shining at the end of every day There's a great big beautiful tomorrow And tomorrow's just a dream away Man has a dream and that's the start He follows his dream with mind to heart And when it becomes a reality It's a dream come true It's another Halloween here in the fabulous 40s. Everything is better than ever now. And we've got some amazing new wonders around the house to prove it. For instance, our refrigerator holds more food and ice cubes. And thanks to our automatic dishwasher, oh, I don't have to dry the dishes anymore after supper. Gives Rover and me more time to enjoy our evening stroll together. <laughs> <laughs> Later, boy. Oh, and here's something else that's new. I just heard a new term today on the radio. Fella says, we've got something now called the rat race. Did you ever hear that one? It sure describes my life. I'm involved in something now called commuting. I drive into the city for work all day and then turn right around and drive all the way back. And the highway is crowded with fellow rats doing the same thing. That's what they call progress, dear. <laughs> yeah, I guess she's right. But we do have television <laughs> when it works. Gives you something to do after you come home. I kind of like it, you know? Guy named John Cameron Swayze gives us all the news. And then they have all this singing and dancing. A lot of fluff, but it's fun. You know, I predict the day when millions of people will learn Latin and Greek sitting in front of their TV sets. Are you awake, dear? <laughs> Give him a left, you big lug. Ah, yes, a new age of electronic civilization is upon us. Hey, Dad, what do you think of my jack-o'-lantern? Oh, oh, boy, that's scary. That's because I'm using my beautiful sister Patty's picture for a model. <laughs> <laughs> Down, Rover. Jim, Rover appreciates your joke. Now, you're always kidding poor Patty. She's certainly prettier than either of you. Oh! oh. You hear that? My daughter Patty is using that old exercise machine she rescued from the attic. It was all a rage in the 20s. Grandma, of course, had to have one. Didn't work then, doesn't work now. <laughs> Consistent, at least. Makes a lot of noise and blows fuses. As I was saying, Pat, I think college is really swell. You should give it a try. Oh, Patty, are you going to the Halloween party tonight? Oh, yes. And I'm hoping to lose a few more inches by then since I'm going with that dreamboat, Wilfred. Wilfred? What a slug! He's coming as the headless horseman. <laughs> it fits. Come on, Ben. Let Claude Hopper Howard you're going with is no cracker jack pie. Oh, poor Howard. I wonder what they said about me when I was dating Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky, Rover. You don't have to date. Well, we're caught up in the do-it-yourself craze these days. We're remodeling our basement in something called a, a rumpus room, and we're looking forward to a few rumpuses, I'll tell you, as long as they don't get out of hand. John, this papering is getting out of hand. I could use a little help. Now, Sarah, didn't I set up that clever automatic paint stirring machine for you? Yes, John, you're a genius. Of course, this will ruin my food mixer. Not that you'd care. Oh, good old Sarah. Always the last laugh. Ah! 
What happened, Sarah? Oh, you and your progress. That paint mixer of yours just sloshed paint across my rump. A uh, rumpus, a uh, room. <laughs> now, how do you like that? I always say if you're going to be married, marry a girl with a sense of humor. Well, it's time to move on. Let's cheer up Sarah by singing our song. Come on, everybody. There's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow Shining at the end of every day a great big beautiful tomorrow and tomorrow's just a dream away man has a dream and that's the start he follows his dream with mind and heart and when it becomes a reality it's a dream come true for you and me so there's a great big beautiful tomorrow shining at the end of every day there's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow Just a dream away Isn't it a pleasant holiday? Oh, turkey's in the oven, it's peaceful and quiet Yes! 300 points, my best score yet Well, it was peaceful until Santa brought that new virtual reality space pilot game Your turn, Grandma Let's switch the image over to the TV so the resident flying ace can show you how it works now, it's a little tricky. Just use your game glove to fly behind the other guy and blast him with your laser blaster. Laser blaster? Well, I'll give it a try. Take a look around, Grandma. You're in the ship. Feels like I'm really there. Okay, get ready. You're about to blast off. Here goes nothing. Whoa. All right, here he comes. Oh, you missed him. Hey, everybody. I'm done programming our new voice activation system. Now all our household items will do anything we tell them to do. Great. Tell the refrigerator to bring me a root beer. Well, it can't quite do that. But I'll show you something it can do. Tree lights 30% brighter. Ooh. Oh, that's no big deal. Anybody can do that voice-activated stuff. Watch this. Roar! Speak! Uh -huh. John, the oven should respond to your voice commands now. Give it a try. Oh, okay. Here goes. Temperature to 375. Temperature increase to 375. Look at that. It even talks back. Reminds me of certain people I know. <laughs> yeah, right, Dad. You gotta lose them, Grandma. Bank to the right. Remember Dad's turkey last year? <laughs> yeah, that thing really smoked up the place when it burned, didn't it? We ended up microwaving frozen pizzas. Well, no need to worry about the turkey this year. Not with an oven that will do anything your father tells it to do. Oh, good shot. Did you see that? Dad, Grandma's up to 550 points. Did you say 550? Hey, she's getting the hang of that thing. I can't believe all the new gadgets they've got now. You know, in my day... Oh, they... no. You're not going to tell us about the old days when you didn't even have a car phone. Hey, Trish, for a while we didn't even have a house phone. Not to mention laser discs and high-def TV and everything is automated today, including... Well, including that. No privacy at all around this place. Sorry, Orville. Anyway, you guys don't know how good you got it nowadays. You know, my grandpa told me the very same thing when I was a kid. Take that, you nincompoop! Hey, check it out, Dad. Grandma's up to 975 points. Wow, 975? <laughs> Temperature increase to 975. Make mode overload. Command error. John, what's error. wrong with the oven? What, uh, uh... Make mode complete. Enjoy your meal. <laughs> Anyone for pizza? Oh, another Christmas turkey ruined. <laughs> Man, what a game. I really smoked those guys. Looks like I'm resident flying ace now. Oh, best two out of three, Grandma. Later, kid. Boy, that was fun. What will they think of next? Who knows? We've got a whole new century waiting for us out there. Yeah, and maybe sometime in the new century, your father will learn how to talk to our oven. Well, maybe by then ovens will read our minds. But hey, as long as we're all here and happy and together for the holidays, who cares if I burned our Christmas turkey? I do. I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Dad. Someday everything's going to be so automated, you won't ever have to cook another Christmas turkey again. <laughs> 